Welcome to an example on how to find a particular solution to a linear second order non-homogeneous differential equation using the method of variation of parameters. In this problem we're given y sub one equals t squared and y sub two equals t to the negative one satisfy the corresponding homogeneous equation of the given non-homogeneous differential equation, which means the general solution to the non-homogeneous differential equation can be written as y of t equals c sub one times y sub one plus c sub two times y sub two plus big y of t. Well the first two terms make up what's called the complementary function and big y of t is a particular solution. So in this problem we're asked to use the variation of parameters to find big y of t. Normally when solving a linear second order non-homogeneous differential equation using the method of variation of parameters, we follow these three steps. We first solve the corresponding homogeneous differential equation, which gives us y sub c, the complementary function, which again is the sum of these two terms here. And then we find a particular solution using the formula shown here, which we derived in a previous lesson. Once we find the complementary function, y sub c, and a particular solution given by big Y sub P, we then form the general solution as shown here. But for our example, we're already given Y sub one and Y sub two, and we're only asked to find big Y sub P of T. But before we find big Y sub P of T here, it is important to recognize that the given differential equation is not in the correct form. We need it to be in this form here, meaning the first term needs to be Y double prime. So let's first put the equation in the correct form. Let's divide both sides by t squared. Simplifying, we have y double prime minus two divided by t squared times y equals, on the right we'd have negative three t minus t raised to the power of negative two. It's important that we recognize it's not in the correct form because notice how the formula for big y sub p of t does use g of t, which is the right side of the equation, once it's in the correct form. Now let's work on finding big Y sub p of t. Notice how the formula for big Y sub p of t does use the Ronskian of Y sub one comma Y sub two. So let's find this first before setting up this formula. So again, we're given Y sub one is equal to t squared and y sub two is equal to t raised to the power of negative one. We also need to find the first derivatives. So y sub one prime is equal to two t, and y sub two prime is equal to negative t to the negative two. Now let's find the Ronskian of y sub one comma y sub two, which is the Ronskian of t squared comma t to the negative one, which equals this two by two determinant where the first row is y sub one, y sub two, which is t squared t to the negative one. Second row with the first derivatives, two t and negative t to the negative two. This determinant is equal to this product minus this product. Well, t squared times negative t to the negative two would be negative t to the zero or negative one, and we have minus t to the negative one times two t would be two t to the zero, which is two. So we have one minus two, which equals negative three. So now we can find big Y sub P of t, which equals the opposite of Y sub one, which would be negative t squared times the integral, where the numerator is Y sub two times G of t, which would be t to the negative one times g of t is negative three t minus t to the negative two. The denominator is the Ronskian of y sub one comma y sub two, which we know is negative three. Then we have plus y sub two, which is t to the negative one times the integral, where the numerator is y sub one times g of t, which would be t squared times the quantity negative three t minus t to the negative two. The denominator is the Ronskian, and we have dt. Let's continue on the next slide. 
the next step, let's go ahead and factor out negative one-third to eliminate the fraction from the integrand function. So we factor out negative one-third. Here we'd have positive one-third t squared. Let's also distribute here. T to the negative one times negative three t would just be negative three. And then we have minus t to the negative one times t to the negative two is t to the negative three. Factor out negative one-third here, we'd have minus one-third t to the negative one times the integral. Again, let's distribute, so we have negative three t to the third, and then we'd have minus t to the zero, or minus one. And now we integrate. So the integral of negative three with respect to t would be negative three t. And then we'd have minus the integral of t to the negative three, which would be minus t to the negative two divided by negative two, which becomes plus t to the negative two divided by two. And then we have minus one third t to the negative one times the integral of negative three t cubed with respect to t would be negative three times t to the fourth divided by four, negative three fourths t to the fourth. The integral of one with respect to t would be t. Now we'll distribute and combine like terms. So we'll distribute here, and we distribute here. So negative one-third t squared times negative three t would just be negative t cubed. And then one-third t squared times t to the negative two divided by two, that'd be plus one-six t to the zero, or just plus one-six. Now because of the subtraction, we can think of distributing negative one-third t to the negative one. So negative one-third t to the negative one times negative three-fourths t to the fourth. Notice how the threes would simplify out. So we have one-fourth t to the third. And then finally we have negative one-third t to the negative one times negative t that's positive one-third t to the zero, or just plus one-third. So combining like terms, so negative one t cubed plus one fourth t cubed would be negative three fourths t cubed. And one six plus one third is equal to one six plus two six or three six, which equals one half. So this is the particular solution our question is asking for. So going back to the first slide, again, we're not asked to enter the general solution, only the particular solution given by a big Y of t, which once again is negative three-fourths t to the third plus one-half. We do have all the information we need to form the general solution, but again, this question only asks for big Y of t. I hope you found this helpful.